Welcome everyone. I'm Becky Parker, your Executive Director. And please go ahead and eat. I just want to introduce our board real quick and then show you a three minute video. And then I'll let you enjoy lunch and I'll call back up and uh, give a presentation. And Gordon will also be uh, presenting. So uh, let's see. Gordon Glazer is our uh, chair of the board and uh, Mary Shields is our vice chair. And it's amazing that these two people hold the same positions on the Alaska Commission on Aging as well. So they're very well versed on the subject. And so at that point, at this point, I'd like to go ahead and just with this table, we have Judy Brady, if you'd stand. Kurt Steiner is new to the board from the Muni and from uh, uh, Mickey Becker and Lynn Paterna. Uh, Mickey is our incoming treasurer and Lynn is from UAA. Let's see, over here we have Tom Brennan, author, and I put a really nice article in your packet today uh, that he wrote. It'll be on the front cover of our newsletter, but it's very heart touching and heartwarming, and I'd like you to take a minute to read it when you have time. And let's see, we have. Um, Wanda Keel, who is with Dispatch Electric, new to our board. And we have Vera Cruz, new to the board, who's been with us at the center since it's open 36 years ago. And Paula Pulowski, our interim secretary. And then um, I'd like to introduce our staff. At this table, we have Brittany Mitchell, who is manager of our fitness department. We have Stephanie Gross, finance and administration manager. And Don Heflin, who is a head of operations and maintenance for the center. And we have Patrick Curtis over here, who's our program and wellness Hello. director. So thank you very much. Please enjoy your lunch. And then um, Felix, you. would you like to introduce Sure. Your assembly members? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so uh, thank you for the opportunity. And uh, we always love uh, coming down and learning about the wonderful opportunities at the Senior Center. Um, so we have uh, two assembly members uh, representing East Anchorage here, uh, Pete Peterson and Forrest Dunbar. <laughs> downtown and John Weddleton uh, who represents uh, uh, South Anchorage uh, may be joining us a little later as well also want to introduce our staff that is here uh, Jennifer and I'm sorry Ben Clausen okay Ben Clausen she just recently came on as a new deputy clerk uh, in the clerk's office so we're really uh, excited to have her Thank <laughs> you. 
So I refuse to even have a debit card. They keep trying to send me a card. Do not send me a debit card. Because it benefits the banks. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
say B system. It's much better than it was. They're still making improvements in it. It's unfortunately they made the decision to have to ever buy it. They would have checked with a couple of cities that had bought it before us. They would have steered us away from it. And I mean, almost bankrupt the first year. Because they ended up spending millions and millions of dollars on it like we did. I mean, I think we ended up with $80 million. Well, that's, that's, that doesn't measure the loss of productivity, though. There's a serious loss of productivity. Oh, sure. Yeah. 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 Well, the, the, we had hired, unfortunately hired a consultant, and they gave us very bad advice. You know, so we uh, ended up continuing it when we should have canceled it. And we just said, okay, you've got, got to write off that 20 or 30 million or whatever it was to start over. Well, if you looked at the initial, if you looked at the marketing tool that you used to present it, I looked at it, and it looked like you were going to be the Wizard of Oz. You could just control everything from this, you know, some things. It didn't work that way. Well, then we ended up helping Rabbi with our people in the IT department to, to keep working on it and updating it more than we had in the previous day. With our old system, so in the, not only did it cost us a lot of money to get it, to buy it and get it implemented, it cost us additional money on the government and our operating So, in some areas of the dock, they're actually already having to limit the loads, the, the weight that they're So 
So we were doing a boat tour. So Peter, uh, he was over there and showed us that. And so my ship had rolled down. They, they would, the time it would take them to unload the whole ship would be three days. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we have four ships a week. Uh, so they couldn't do it. Yeah, so they bring some of it in to serve, but they're, they're, not, they're not set up for the lobbying all the time. Eighty percent of consumer goods in the state of Alaska come free that way. I think that's the wrong way. And when, when I go down to Juno to talk to legislators about getting money for the port, they all start talking, talking about their port and their district that needs to work to you know, defer to make but it's your stuff. So it's, it's a real, real hard step. <laughs> <laughs> facility was here all these years and I didn't know it. I started with the aerobics. Uh, my girlfriend told me to try the senior center and I thought, sure, okay. The certified instructors, we have more energy, balance is better, chair exercise, dance cardio, and Tai Chi is the best, yoga, mind and body fitness. We have some serious weights here. Yeah. I mean, they're bigger than me. Come on, come on. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people think we're a retirement home, too, which is really bizarre to me. I don't understand. Weird that a senior center has a lot of electricity. Hey, this is a really lively place. These people run me ragged. They are really <laughs> out and going. There's bound to be something that you'll enjoy doing here. There's such a variety of things to do here. There's always games going on. There's a fabulous library. Having your taxes done, they'll do it for you. Birthday parties and the primetime dancers. The card playing group. Or you can come and get a wonderful massage. They have a travel agent that's helping you travel. It's a great place to come on down and relax. But what I enjoy most 
is the volunteer activities. There's something for everyone here, and it's just a, a wonderful mixed group of people. <laughs> They're all characters. We enjoy it, you know, we laugh at each other sometimes, but, but nothing hurtful. Here you can have lifelong friends, I really believe that. And it's, it's a joyous place, it feels like family. There's so much love around around this building. I love working in the gift shop. I practically live down here. So now I have to get up, I've got to come in here. And if I'm not here, my friends call me and say, where are you? This gives me a purpose. And then we have a pool room that is actually the best man cave you've ever seen. <laughs> You need to turn yourself around and come on down to the senior center. I never thought I would ever join, I've never joined anything in my life, ever. And this one place, I will not let go. I would be bored if this place were not here. Get fit, come here and join. It's the Anchorage Senior Activity Center. The center is for everyone.
When they're open, the club itself is very Well, of course, that one is not open on Sundays, but on Saturdays, they just close the rest of the I'm not sure, but I know the East Club have had one as well. I hear all the stories from friends that work there. Well, they had a full service restaurant. I only have one thing. The only thing is I have to do with the H.O. I'm going to start with the onion. Let the left go for a while. Let the change everybody in that area will have. Yeah. 
Is it our bead? Our bead display card? Yes, I saw one of the that. Those circle lights on the outside of the building. It's going to cost us a lot of do we need it? Do we need it? Do we I don't know. I mean, some people like it. I don't know. I mean, some people like it. They're looking at it right now. We'll see if it's going to be launched on the next day. Well, we can have it. I mean, there's always foundation when they're available, but in the end, right, right, you know, it's still different. The shooting is available quite a bit of art. They have a bunch of other handwell on the floor. They have a bunch of other handwell on the floor. They have a bunch of other handwell on the floor. They have a bunch of other handwell on the floor. They have a bunch of other handwell on the floor. So uh, it's just when we have three sort of so you know, we're 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 we're
And uh, I have to tell you, I went to two classes and I flunked. <laughs> so I'll have to go again. But it, it really, you know, there's little ditties and stuff and you fill in the blanks. Who would have thought? We would forget those. <laughs> but I guess I am a senior, so I'm, I'm there. Anyway, um, we have been here 36 years and we've had the contract from the municipality of Anchorage to operate the facility and this is your land and your facility and we're just here to take care of it and to nurture the people who come here every day and address their services and needs and to, to be the heart of the community to them. So um, it's a privilege that, that, we're, that we have the contract and we want you to know how much we appreciate it. Our membership is growing. We're at 1,700. By the end of the year, we expect to have 2,000 and more. And I, I was just sharing, I, I was re, I got the uh, Borealis newsletter last night, so I was reading through to see who the new members are. And I don't know how many of you remember Sheila Toomey from the year. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's back. Yeah. She's oh, right. joining the Senior Center. I am so excited. I'm going to call her and ask her to start the year. I think, you know, everybody will want to buy our Senior Center Borealis. Okay. Our Borealis is doing very well, by the way. Uh, we have a gentleman here. He sells ads for us. And uh, the new Aspen Living uh, Home bought a $2,600 ad from us yesterday. So it's really doing well. Most of what we do, though, is we're really about saving lives. We are saving lives here uh, by giving seniors a purpose. And it's becoming more and more obvious to us that if you have a reason to get up in the morning and go to a center or go someplace and engage with others, you're going to be happier and you're probably going to live longer. And we have so many people who are really fighting loneliness. <coughs> we want to combat that. We have about 300 to 400 people who live right across the street, and many of them come over here. They're in affordable housing, and they love this neighborhood because this gives them a place to have breakfast if they want, or to um, play cards, get involved. We just have almost anything you would want here. We had a, 150 people here last Saturday for a Parkinson's disease. Um, uh, seminar. The people came were from national doctors and uh, leaders in that field, and it was absolutely overwhelming the number of people who we know coming here and absolutely hungry for that kind of information. So I want to thank um, Patrick. He helped with that. Um, just so you know, we are open Monday through Friday from 8 to 5. Um, so Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And then uh, we have, we're have we open Tuesdays and Thursdays from 8 to 8 p.m. So it's a 12-hour day, and uh, we still have seniors working, so they like to come here in the evenings. And then we are also open from 9 in the morning until 2 on Saturdays for those who want to come in and work out, use the business group. And Brittany has us all working out. Uh, we also have five churches who meet here on Sunday. So if you think Sunday is quiet, uh-uh. That's when it's rocking and rolling here. <laughs> so you're welcome to do those two. I'd like to share just a couple things that have happened here uh, in the last couple weeks. And it's, it's pretty really hard some days. Um, emotionally to, to work with some of the seniors who are coming in because um, we have the Benefit Enrollment Center, so we have Patrick who's, um, and Nyla who do some of the uh, eligibility for Medicaid and other um, senior benefits, so utilities and food and others. But um, we've been having quite a few people come in who are really on the brink of being homeless. They're in emergency situations and they need food. And I want to assure you, if anybody comes here, nobody goes hungry. We always have a soup cauldron, thanks to the donors and Gordon. Um, we have a lovely soup cauldron out after 2 o'clock that's free. And if you're here during lunch, there's always there's always something on the counter, sandwiches that didn't get eaten at an event or 
pie or coffee, but nobody goes hungry here. And we really know pretty much who's coming here so we can keep track of them, make sure that they get they get to the ADRC office at the Muni or they come here to meet with them. We have Alaska Legal Services coming here. So, I mean, we're working very closely with the housing um, situation in Anchorage, but I just want you to know we're seeing an increase and it's really, it, it really strikes at your heart when you're right in the middle of something and you've got to stop and, but you know, once you hear their story, you are hooked. I mean, you, you don't want to finish until you have found them housing or food. That's just who we are. So uh, the other day, Gordon and I were talking about an upcoming event. And a friend of mine who's been coming here for a long time, he's a retired attorney and uh, goes nameless, but he came in my office and uh, he just had this stare. And he said, you know, I am really worried about my dog and my cat. I'm kind of it. There's no one else in my life now and everybody's gone. And I'm just wondering, Becky, if there's somebody here who could call me daily to see if I'm alive. Because I don't want to die and have my dog and cat not get fed. <laughs> and so, I mean, it's really very sad to think that, you know, we have people in our community who are lonely. He's very, he's always been very engaged, but when they go home sometimes, you know, and a lot of their friends are gone and their family's gone, it's really lonely. And who wants to say they're lonely? But most of us, you know, as busy as I am, I'd expect, I, I've experienced loneliness. I think we all have, whether it's a Sunday afternoon, I, you know, whatever. But I think we can be empathetic to that. And uh, so we do have people that we can refer them to. <coughs> um, and so is our community. So I just want to say, if it wasn't for our faculty, our staff here, our uh, facility, our board members, they are so compassionate and passionate about what we're doing. That's what makes the difference. And that's what's keeping people alive and wanting to give them a purpose to come back here. So thank you. Somebody giving grants or giving money away, we've got somebody who knows them, maybe taught them, maybe had them in the army, uh, and, we, and we hit them up. So we're not asking you for that, but we are asking you to provide the same support. Um, the reality of it is that this is an aging population, uh, both, this is an aging, an aging building, <coughs> about in a minute, but as the population ages, there's more and more need for us. Uh, as Becky talked about, uh, the Medicaid system is not that easy to navigate. 70% of the people uh, in this city now are 65 or older. Almost everybody either is on uh, Medicaid, uh, Medicare um, or has a family member that is. And trying to understand how it works, you need to have someone with who can go over that chew box of paperwork you have for the doctors. 
uh, to figure that out. And literally people come in here and walk out of here, maybe not with a smile, but they're not thinking um, I'm gonna be living in a shelter because I can't afford to live in my house. And I know you all have been addressing some of the cost of medical services and prescriptions. This is as people age, a certain segment of the population, including myself, find out we spend more and more in terms of prescription drugs. Uh, and it's a real issue. Uh, that $12,000 means sometimes people can pay their rent and they can make it eat. Uh, we've done uh, fundraisers, everything from uh, the concert coming up, which I'm hoping some assembly member will come to, uh, uh, to our garden gala, which really is a, a stellar event. We need that $135,000, no question for collaboration. But we also need to raise our profile because, uh, put it directly, many older people become invisible. And we are important that we are seen. Because of that part of that loneliness is, is that people don't see you. And here you are seen, you are heard, and what you say matters. Um, what we're going to be asking you about is the bond issue. And uh, I'm gonna ask people to hand out these uh, I'll break down with these different things here. Can you look right the table? And it's a big number. It's $2.7 million, uh, million, million dollars. Uh, but this, the bones here uh, of, this, of this structure are good. This is a large facility. It gets lots of use, as you saw, just walking through here as you took the tour. Uh, it needs some major upgrades, needs some major maintenance. To put it succinctly, putting a tarp in your central entranceway, you keep out the rain. If not, it was long term fix. And that's literally literally what we're what we're doing. And figuratively and Kurt will give you the details much better than I can about what everything's in there and why. Um, we serve both the bottom and the top. That he talked about people coming in here hungry and that we've had some concerns about people living in their cars. But we also have people in here who are middle class, or upper middle class, um, from who, who participate. And it's important for us that we serve that full spectrum. Uh, this is not, you know, once an agency, part of the problem with Beans Cafe is that they've been classified as into a certain group. We serve a full population, a full spectrum, and we continue to do that. So I'll be answering questions if we have them there. Um, I want to start moving, moving, moving on. And there are dark clouds on the horizon, and with Alaska's peak oil, many worry that Alaska's best days have passed. We believe in Alaska. We believe in the positive leadership in, in Anchorage, which is the assembly, there, that we can make this a better community for those who are young and for those who are old. I'm asking you to join us in building an Anchorage's, Anchorage's future. And thank you for your past support and dedication to our aging population. Um, and I'll be happy to answer your questions. After this, we'll be having Medicare uh, celebration. That is an important program for the lots and for many others. I encourage you to join us. Go ahead. Thank you, Gordon. And then I know we have a hearing that starts, I think, at 1.30 or 2, so we will all try to leave pretty quickly. So with this bond uh, request here, how much of this was on the prior bond that failed? Was it, was it the full 2.75? Yeah, pretty much it was the same one. Has there been talks of, well, actually, I know that there has been, but could you detail a little bit what the strategy is, maybe work with the administration, trying to figure out, should we go for the whole thing at once? Should we make, maybe take a smaller ch chunk out of it? Or do we just need to change the messaging, right? I think partly it was just the way that the bond was written is one of the reasons it failed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess I'm saying, we were looking for you from the assembly. Yeah. You know, we're, we're friends and I've been here that I can be direct. Some things in the mayor's office get dropped, some things get carried out. We're asking you to help us to make sure it doesn't get dropped. Go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, so um, I guess the assembly members don't know this yet, um, but I have been working with uh, the leadership of the assembly departments about what we can do to have review of all of these ballot propositions before we vote on them, before they get on the ballot. And um, 
So we've developed a, a checklist of, okay, before um, we vote on this, let's make sure that we have all the review of, of course, the legal team, but I think what's <laughs> more important realistically is that we have review of non-legal minds, and we have review of the community stakeholders of these ballot propositions. So um, we have been developing sort of a checklist of before something gets to us, let's make sure all of these things have been done. And I, and I think that, that will hopefully get to some of these issues that I know was in the language of how it's crafted. And if I could just add, we have been working closely with the uh, municipality facilities team to come up with that list. So it has been really very well reviewed internally. And um, two years ago, we were awarded 100, 125,000 for the carpet. If I'd known what I know now, I would have asked for the 2.7 then because our people were out voting. Last year, um, you know, because of the proposition number one, uh, a lot of people were there to vote for the school. The fact that we weren't mentioned by name on proposition three, I think we would have probably passed that, but our name wasn't even local. The only, there were like four or five different groups that were part of proposition three, and only the Anchorage Cemetery, Memorial Cemetery, was mentioned at all. So nobody really knew what they were voting for. That was an easy one to vote no for. So I'm really hoping that, um, you know, and it, it is kind of gloomy right now. I mean, we're seeing Nordstrom's clothes and companies leave, and it's, you know, it is kind of gloomy. But I think we need to stay steady and try and be as positive as we can. We're going to be here for the long term. That oil is still going to be here. They're going to keep looking for it. And they will build that pipeline at some point or build a gas line because there's too much gas in the ground to leave it. So uh, it might not be in our line to lifetime. Probably, maybe not. I was hopeful, but I've been here 44 years and I'm still hoping. And, uh, but you know, it will come back. It's cyclical in Alaska, so stay positive because it is, it, I have been told that it is cyclical. Good so I, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just curious what work's maybe been done to try to leverage uh, the private community against some of the expenses, particularly, I don't know, mental health trust or uh -huh. others? We haven't gone to the mental health trust yet, but I am working closely with Diane Kaplan from the Rasmussen Foundation. The first time I went over this, this year to meet with her, uh, or actually I think she came over here, um, she said, you know, Becky, this is not good use of your time trying to pick out paint and carpet and clean the place up. We need to get a pre-development plan over here. We need to, you know, start looking at what the facility needs. And so she said, I'll have Steve Fishback come this week. Two days later, he's here walking through the building. And he says, well, you're obviously, up. I can see the growth. And he said, you're running out of fitness room. And, you know, you need more space for this and that. He said, I'll put a plan together and work with the Rasmussen Foundation, get back with them. So I'm kind of hoping, you know, and I, I just spent a few days with Diane, that, um, you know, that between the mayor and the Rasmussen Foundation, that we'll all be talking about what's what we can possibly do over time if we have to have a capital campaign or we can do the bond or do part of it with the bond part of the capital campaign a little bit every year um you know over three to five years i think you know would work but we want it done i want it done i've been here five years i want it done I, i'm going to give it another five <laughs> we have done some work with the mental health trust primarily through our partners the uh, alzheimer's uh, memory cafe that we have in there it's essentially one of the things that I'm mostly fighting. Um, we haven't done in terms of some of the other programs just because they're having a little hard time. <sighs> there are a number of mental health issues here, uh, besides the homeless. I mean, we talked about terms of the catchment area. But um, it, the issue of traumatic brain injury and fall prevention, they're more, they're not into that primary prevention of the, with the Tai Chi to prevent falls, even though that's evidence based in terms of prevention. They're more in terms of what what do we do after in terms of recovery. But we have looked at it, we have talked about it. Mostly it's been with our partners, but that's something we're we'll, we'll continuing the process. Good question. Go ahead, Mary. 
I just want to add, however, when it comes to the physical plan, yes, this physical plan is owned by the municipality of Anchorage. And therefore, that's the reason, basically the reason for the bond issue. It is, we don't own it. We can go to a lot of programs to do a lot of things, and we do that very well. But when it comes to the physical, the repair of the physical portion of this facility, that comes back to the municipality. And it's hard for us to go for grants to say, well, we'll do it for improvement, because they'll do it for exactly. the capital improvement for a nonprofit. We don't actually own the facility. What we're in fact saying is, we want you to fix your property and we'll help sell this bond uh, and help us do that. But we're not gonna own it. You're gonna own it. This is eventually when the repair will be for this building is owned by the municipality, uh, not by us. And that sort of limits where we go out and we go to the private sector and say, would you support something for this building? That's why it's being this, this is totally, I, just because we're all here and we're in records, this is just idea that's throwing out there. What if we gave you a facility? What if you did own this facility in the land? Or did you Could you go out and get more other, other kinds of funding? I think it would open us up for other, for for more funding sources. I know it would open up more funding sources, and we can do mortgages and those types of things. But I will tell you, um, it's taking municipal land out. Uh, that covenant, as you know, is probably not the easiest task. And um, I'm going to put that on a back burner for this year, but that may be a, a longer term plan. Uh, on it because, as I said, um, you're really you're with this partly part of the park land, as I understand it, and they did land for a particular purpose. And besides the Fairview Rex of community, if I was still president of it, would probably jump up and down if you gave up this land. Yeah, on that note, if I might, I don't know about that, but I understand and have seen plans for development this way. But where are you in that process? Good question in terms of the, the housing. We really did a full college press in terms of trying to get housing in here. We went and saw different facilities. We had uh, got a grant to do a site plan. We brought in architects, and bluntly, we could build it. We couldn't operate it. It just was um, we couldn't. We can't compete. We don't have that skill set. We don't have the, the, just quite enough land that we can make a big enough facility that we could cook. We could compete with. Say Cook Inlet um, the housing or an Alaska <coughs> housing. Yeah. Um, is it dead? No. But is it on a back burner? Yes. It just didn't cancel out in a sense. And let me be direct. Um, the present governor has is, is, is put us a, a number in there in terms of that we're not sure operational funds will be there for some of the, the housing around here. Um, that being said, we're very supportive of, of subsidized housing for older populations. Many of them come in here from throughout the whole city, uh, from uh, Muldoon to uh, Eagle River, who come to this facility. Um, uh, and I can talk about transportation and improvement on that. But um, uh, yes, it's, it's on a back burner now. We really put that, looked at it, we sweated, and we, we ended all, we went to conferences, we brought an architecture in, architect in. But in the final line, we, we came to the numbers. They just didn't uh, op operate out as a for being And I, I have to be really honest. We, we worked a lot uh, closer with Cook Inlet Housing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe another architect could come up with something different, but they didn't give us a plan that you know we felt like we could live with. Uh, there would be 30 units on this end and 30 on this end. I think we could go up higher, but we have to look at it. There's more land behind us, but we'd have to buy the three houses on the end of the street. It has water, it has electricity, but we'd have to have the city buy those, put in more housing. We could go high and have views of the mountains. Mm -hmm. If you could do a mixed, I think there would be a great chance that there would be people at the center and elsewhere who would buy uh, the top floors and do a mixed uh, living housing. Uh, we could also go into the park, but that would be a real challenge. And the mayor said, if you're going into the park, come to me sooner than later. And so we haven't, and it doesn't mean we won't. I was continuing this conversation with a uh, uh, realtor uh, designer from Seattle, and she said, oh my gosh, if you guys end up you know, doing any kind of a fitness center or anything, build housing on top of it. And I went, oh, what 
Okay, it is on a back burner. It's not dead. It's on a back burner. Um, so, but the answer for today is no. Um, your wife does lunch here next year. Right. Asking that same question. How's that? Uh, are there any other questions? Okay, I've, I've got some eye problems, so I'm missing something coming up. Um, the last, well, the other thing I want to give you on here, and I think there will be cake in about just about now because we want to come, is we really appreciate the personal relationship that we have with you with the seven members. And I know I said speaking to you, we're really feeling the same way out uh, there. Um, yes, we're super voters, but I've seen Pete and talked to him before, and, and some of the, the, the people who, who were on this me before who really care about the people here. And that means so much for our members. Thank you for taking the time to come out here. Thank you for your questions. We'll be meeting with you and uh, Maybe I'll see you cake and maybe you need to move on. I understand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.